Hey, hey, System Coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, on the road to glory with the best team in the world in the future. Right now, Leighton Orient is still in League One, as you guys know, and we are having an amazing time on this career mode. You guys are continuing to support the channel in a massive, massive way. Both of the series are being uploaded daily at the moment, and once again, we're back with the road to glory. So I'm happy to bring it back to you guys, and hopefully you guys are enjoying it. If not, um, I'm sorry, but if yes, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. YouTube have taken away 1,000 subscribers from the channel, guys. Ah, oh, they have deleted inactive accounts and my channel has been hit right before I'm trying to get to the 300,000. So it, be, it will be amazing. If you are watching this and you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe to the channel. And if you are a subscriber already, please turn on notifications. Let's get things started today, guys. We have made a couple of signings as in a pre-contract for the next season, and that I am very, very happy about. I genuinely cannot wait for Tarin to join into our team to play alongside Collins, and of course, Haraslin to come in into the team as well to play as our left mid so that Cook can enjoy his time down the right and Lewis can be the super sub once again. Yes, Lewis is performing well, but I do need better players in the next season, especially because Lewis without the skills and without the weak foot, that is going to be a big issue once we come up against stronger sides. But right now, I'm very happy with the fact that we are bringing in those two players and happy with the fact that we still have around... 700,000 coins, uh, 700,000 coins, 700,000, or let's say six, no, let's put it up to 700, 700,000 in the budget and 13k in the wage budget, really happy with the way things are going, one thing I am not happy with is the fact that Davis might still leave our team in, in this chance window, if we get one more transfer request for him, that might be it boys, and I might be forced to accept it, so hopefully, that is not going to be a thing that happens. He's still unhappy. Hopefully, um, that will change soon enough. Going into one of the top comments of the last episode, it is coming in from Indian Football Stereotypes. And he says, Johnny, you're my favorite YouTuber. Currently, my exams are going on and I'm pretty frustrated and exhausted during the day. But in my country, your videos comes out at night. It's the perfect stress buster for me. I love your content. Keep it up. Thank you, man. I really, really appreciate you guys letting me know how my videos are actually helping you throughout the day. It really makes my day because personally, man, I'm sat here the entire day when I'm working. I'm always watching streams of other FIFA YouTubers. I'm always watching videos of other FIFA YouTubers. It helps me get through my day as well. So um, it's nice to see that I can be that person for you guys as well. I know how much that means. I don't think I could handle a day without YouTube. I'm not even kidding, man. It is a part of my daily life at this point and I'm happy with it. Now, we have another comment coming in from Dimitri Sergakis and he says like so Johnny can see first of all he starts off immediately with that but then he says best areas to send scouts to defensive minded I should be looking for northern Europe physically strong I should be looking for Africa playmaker I should be looking for central Europe technically gifted obviously southern Europe or Brazil Argentina and the rest of South America has a 30% chance uh, wingers are easier to find in japan and china apparently which is very interesting and then in terms of attackers we should be going to brazil and argentina thank you very much for letting me know the percentages i really really do appreciate it i'm going to keep that comment around for when i send my scouts away one more time also by the way guys we should have the new goalkeeper kits there we go bennett has his new goalkeeper kit now, guys. He is going to enjoy that one, hopefully. Um, I think that is very important so that our players have um, some sort of individuality as well. So Bennett has that new goalkeeper kit now on him, which has that FIFA 20 design on him. I hope you guys are happy with that one. I personally am very happy with that one. I wanted something that kind of stands out a little bit more and isn't as boring as the simple green kits that we had on our goalkeepers. Now, though, to start off this episode, let's take a look into the league table, guys. First position, 63 points. 60 points on three teams below us, so it is not a secured position yet. 
but you can tell one thing our goal difference is absolutely mental we have one of the best defenses in the league and of course we have the best attack in the league due to Lee Angol and Jesus Ferreira both having scored a combined amount of 42 goals in 26 games that is just incredible and today we're going to start off with a huge matchup against MK Dons let's get right into it boys let's see what we can achieve the new year has started 2021 and we are getting results as we go into this match, remember guys, this team had two very, very good attacking players. MK Dons had two of the top scorers in the league within their squad. So it's going to be quite an interesting matchup for us to get into. Hopefully we can get a good result right here. Um, we definitely want to win this game. We have proven multiple times that we are the best team in this league. Despite only getting promoted into League One, we have proven that we definitely possess the quality to continue beating all of these teams. Now, the fact that Wagner is back into the team has been a great improvement. Antonsen has been ridiculous lately. And there he goes again. Antonsen! He goes again and he scores. Antonsen gets involved one more time. It is 1-0 after only three minutes did you see how the defense opened up Ferreira now getting yet another assist I really wonder how many assists Ferreira has this season after this match hopefully I will remember to check that out but that is a terrible goalkeeping mistake Antonsen literally took that shot right onto him here comes Boateng Boateng it's 1-1 it's a good cross Collins up against two defenders. He's not jumping up though. And Wagner actually is the one to get to it. Wagner, not enough pace to catch up to Nicolas Izilo. It is 1-1. Quite impressive attack there from MK Dons. This is turning out to be a more of a competitive game than I expected. But then again, it is the sixth place team in the league. So we should show some respect. Of course, me getting all of these great results in the past has led to me getting quite confident when playing against teams in league one but that right there davis proves me that you're still a young talent that needs to learn and you should stick to leighton orient you shouldn't go anywhere you need to learn around here if the pre-contract signings that we're bringing in next season can be as good as antonsen if not better i would be so happy i'm just excited about the fact that um rodri is going to join us that is a good chance there that is saved up, uh, picked up by a Bennett. Um, I'm just excited about the centre-back partnership of Collins and Rodri. I genuinely believe that that could be something that takes us to the next level because uh, one of the issues that we have always had, of course, is the fact that we're conceding too many goals while recording these episodes. And um, hopefully with Collins improving as much as he have and then bringing in another good centre-back next to him, we can start defending better in the future. Yes, Wagner, well done. Wagner on the defense, now pushing forward. Wagner, of course, with the five-star weak foot and the skills on top of it. He brings it in. Great ball into Ferreira. Ferreira cuts back in. The defender is paying attention. But we do get it back again into Cook. Cook now looking for that pass to Angol. Ferreira brings the ball inside. Ferreira looking for someone to pass it to, but there's absolutely no one helping him out right now. Except maybe Davis. Davis creates some space for himself. Davis on his right foot. He gets it in. Davis, not really known to be the best finisher this time around. He lets us take the lead one more time. Davis, please don't leave us. I beg, Davis. It means so much to me to have you in this team, man. You have been such a great talent. You're one of the highest rated talents that I have in my squad. It would hurt this road to glory so much to let go of him or being forced to let go of him but at the same time it would probably bring in over like 20 million into the club which of course would improve everything about this career mode in terms of like scouting and stuff but that's not what I want man I want to keep Davis around I want to have him in my team I want to grow this team to be legendary at some point that's what I want to do oh no great ball Hopper defends it Izilo once again inside the box we have uh, Lampru right on top of him. Lampru does extremely well in that position, actually. I'm quite impressed. And Ferreira is now in behind. Ferreira to finish it off. 
Ferreira cuts back in, creates the space and finishes it. That is the quality of a top class striker to take the movement of his opponent, use it to his advantage and then come up with an incredible skill uh, of celebration, which I have no idea how I did that, but I did it. Ferreira, drag back, turns around, gets the finesse in into the top right corner, goalkeeper pushed out, wasn't in the right position to save it, 3-1 up against Milton Keynes Dons, that is very good to see from our team, I'm excited to just see our team succeed once again against one of the top sides in the league, we have played against Colchester in one of the last episodes, the team that we couldn't beat for whatever we were doing, we could not beat them and now it seems like we are getting some solid and consistent results into the squad. Oh, well, it's 3-2. Boateng brings it back. It is a great cross with, once again, our defense. This is one of the key issues that my defenders are having. Low aggression. And I'm not even kidding. It's not about pace. It's not about all of that. I feel like the low aggression in positions like those where they need to be more aggressive towards the ball, it just isn't there. They need to be closer to the man. Wagner, once again, getting beaten in the air and Collins in nowhere in no man's land so to say it is quite disappointing to see our team let our opponents back into the game can i do a ball roll i can't even do a ball roll with lewis man it's mad good steal by harper now we definitely need a fourth here to make sure that we get this win lewis come on lewis get it for the team let's go it's six two not six two it's four two in the 60 second that's what i wanted to say lewis Yes, man, he knows Haraslin is coming for his spot. He knows it. And Lewis shows a great, great uh, finish right there with good composure up against the goalkeeper. Looks into the corner, looks onto the ball, takes the shot, does extremely well in that position. Jordan Lewis taking us to that promised land of getting three points in this game, I think. Oh, no, not again. Not again. Oh my god. Izilo, what a header. And Bennett, what a save. Look at him. He's happy about it. And he's angry at the same time. But that header had too much power on it. How the hell does he get that much power on that header? Here goes Ferreira now. Ferreira pushing on. Getting in behind. Ferreira wants another one. Ferreira! Goalkeeper can't even do anything against it. We're going to shush the man because we want to. Ferreira! Let's go! What a strike! What a run! The defenders are already disheartened. They thought, oh, it's 3-2, we can come back into this game. No, you cannot, because we have the best team in the league. And after that goal, I am going to test out someone. Florentin, the player that we have found on... Um on the uh, in this transfer window, we are now bringing him in as a player to play down that left hand side. Silva de Moraes, I think, deserves more play time. McPherson also is asking for more play time, so we're going to give him his chance as well. Oh, good shot once again. Yet again, it is Bennett with a good save. Great ball, Silva, Florentin. The two new lads now playing together. Florentin showing a lot of pace right here. Gets inside the box. Plays it in. Silva hits it right onto Nichols. Unlucky. Ooh, coach is looking slick today. Ferreira looking for the hat-trick. Ferreira might actually play it across to Angol. What a nice move from Ferreira. Being a good teammate and trying to get Angol to score another one. But sadly, it did not work into his favor. Angol hits the post as we um, attempted to get another goal for him. And the referee should be blowing the whistle any moment. It is going to be a victory, a convincing one against MK Dons. From the road to glory side, the O's are performing once again. Great game, a game that the fans definitely enjoyed and a game that especially our strikers enjoyed quite a lot. And Tonsen once again with a great performance. Lewis gets himself a 9.5 from one goal and one assist, which is good to see. Ferreira, three assists, two goals. Wow, and goal didn't do anything. I'm surprised. I can't believe Ferreira actually only has 65 dribbling, by the way. But the good thing is that we have definitely improved his strength quite a lot this season. It was very, very much necessary because 
He just wasn't up with the task of pushing people away. Coulson transfer approach has been made. I'm totally fine with Coulson leaving the team on a pre-contract because obviously we're replacing him in the next season with Rodri. Um, no issues there. But in terms of assists, who has the most assists this year? Ferreira. Wow. He has 23 goals and 17 assists. Are you kidding me? Antonsen has nine assists as well. Good to see, man. Good to see. Davis is on six. But Angol, 15 assists, 21 goals. That is incredible. Both of our strikers are something special. And they have worked together. That is the reason why they have so many assists. Of course, Ferreira has gotten a few more this season because he just is everywhere. It's so surprising to see. He literally is everywhere. Our next opponent is, though, let's look into the old table. We have Tramir Rovers right now in the 18th position. That should be a good matchup for our team, who has only lost three games this season. Tramir have won two out of their last three. That is not a good omen for this one. I am hoping that our team can keep on performing the way they have been and uh, pick up another victory. Actually, a draw would still be fine enough uh, as long as we don't lose here. Since it is an away game, this could be a loss, but Lewis steps up again. If you guys remember, Lewis has been scoring lots of goals in simulations. There's something about him that just works in simulations, most importantly, and it is gonna be a draw. Lewis scores first, they score 11 minutes later, and uh, that is the scoreline. 1-1, one, one, one point picked up out of the second game of today's episode. Up next, we have QPR, then the game against Oxford, and then the transfer deadline day, boys. All of that will be in today's episode, and I think I'm going to make one more signing. I'm going to scout through everything and try and find at least one more great uh, player to bring into our team for the next season. Um, hopefully, we can do that, but right now... This is our setup. The team is looking good. Happy is the only player that always has stamina issues, which I find quite interesting. He has 58 stamina. Yeah, that's 20 below Collins, and you can tell that for sure. Maybe we give a chance to Anderson. You know what? Anderson, 16 years old, 18 years old. That is now our partnership at the back, and of course, the captain is Wagner and not Collins. It's time for the FA Cup in the beautiful away kit of Leighton Orient and then we are up against QPR and there's a funny story here behind this game against QPR guys which I need to tell you. I actually, the first career mode I ever watched on YouTube was Cal Freezy's QPR career mode, yes. Those days, man, I was addicted to Cal Freezy, his QPR career mode. And genuinely, that is what made me start um, really, really get into career mode as much as I have back in the day. And start to think like, oh, this is, this is something that I want to do myself. So, Cal Freezy, huge shout out to you, my man, for being an inspiration for me back in the day. I really appreciate it. Antonsen will later on come on as a substitute and hopefully run through the entire midfield. As Davis does right now. Davis. Davis. Gets past one. Davis gets past two. Davis gets past three. And he gets taken out. Get in, Davis. Let's go, man. And you're saying you're not getting any play time. Dude, you're playing every single game. You're playing every single game. And now, Lee Angol to decide this one with a perfect penalty, right? That's what he's about to do. Oh, wow. Kelly saves it. QPR fans celebrating that save to the max. Lee Angol, unfortunate. That was a good penalty, though. Angol does want to go again, and his head eyes. God awful. Collins now, of course, playing together with Anderson for the first time. Anderson plays as a center back. I really wonder how good he can be for us. As we try and push on with the likes of Cook after an exceptional ball from Wagner. And another ball inside. Brian defense for his life. 21st minute, still no goals for each side. And now Cook is going to go on a run. Cook. Cook is going to stop right here. Cook is going to cut back in. He's going to get the ball somehow into Ferreira's feet. I did not expect that. I did not expect the ball to fall to his feet like that. Lewis now. We're pushing in now with Lewis. Lewis, of course, has a good left foot on him, and he now plays it through to Ferreira. 
Ferreira, I wish he had four star skills, but he doesn't need it. Oh, why am I taking finesse shots without goal? I need to use power shots. Now I'm kind of like confused as to what to do with goal for whatever reason, because I haven't scored in a few shots now. I, it looks like I've forgotten how to score goals with him. Davis back into McPherson. McPherson now looking into Davis once again. Davis waiting for that one moment to play it through into Ferreira. Ferreira cuts back in, plays it, on goal, left foot, unlucky. Dibon gets in between, yet another chance that is created through the pass of Ferreira into Wagner. Wagner, left foot, doesn't matter. Wagner, exceptional finesse shot. That was amazing. Let's see a, re a replay of that one. I think the technique on that one was unbelievable. How the hell did the goalkeeper save that? After 45 minutes have passed now, I can tell you one thing. This team of QPR is not an easy team to play against. You can tell that there's a difference between them and the teams that we normally play against. They are much stronger, much more solid in the defense especially. It seems like they're kind of nullifying our attacks and that is definitely something that we need to change in that second half. We've had our chances with the likes of Angol but we haven't used them properly. Oh, what a ball. What a ball. And this might be another goal over the side of our beloved Wagner. Anderson right there to pick it up when it was necessary. Of course, we'll be looking back into Angol. Angol on his right foot. It's a good finish, but an even better save. That's a good cross. Davis gets it, and here we go with Dennis. Dennis hasn't played in a long time. Dennis now wanting to prove what he can do. He plays it over the top to Florentine. Florentine, of course, fresh in the game, asking for someone to come close. It's going to be Ferreira who misses the ball. Oh, is that a good ball? That is an incredible ball, and Bennett has to step up and save it. It is a header from right outside the box. That rem reminds me of one of the headers that Van Persie had. Wow, <laughs> that might have just been one of the best headers I've ever seen in my life. And luckily, Bennett is capable of saving it. Florentine now, he is getting that corner. Florentine now pushing up. Florentina asking for Ferreira. Ferreira now through. It is all on him. Ferreira with the pressure. Ferreira, can he get it done? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. It is Ferreira once again. And I pressed the wrong buttons. Instead of celebrating, he's showing respect. Who knows? We'll take it. Jesus Ferreira. You, my friend, have done it once again. He gets past everyone. That pace even until the late minutes he still has it in him Florentino with a great ball into him three goals in the FA Cup already for Ferreira who just can't stop scoring the referee should be blowing the whistle any second as we get another victory in the FA Cup against one of the strongest sides in the league uh, in not in the league but in general a stronger side than our team Leighton Orient keep on causing upsets one more time, it is Jesus Ferreira who, in my opinion, right now, should be considered one of the biggest striking talents in world football. This guy scores goals in every single match and it's ridiculous. By the way, some people said that the Nike sign on our shirts looks like the dragon is wearing an earring and I actually like it. Looks sick. <laughs> Oh well guys, we do have a message coming in, an offer for Anderson, it's another one year loan, but I have to say I was impressed with Anderson at centre back, so for that reason, he's not going anywhere, at least for now, and then Coulson is actually leaving, he's going to join Sturm Graz um, when his contract expires, which um, again, I think is the right move, Coulson needed to go and he was only worth like 100k so I let him go guys uh, for free, I think that's going to be okay because we wouldn't have gotten like 50k from it, I know we could have been more efficient by selling him but I just wanted to let that man go and enjoy his time off um, in a different league, now uh, by the way though to be honest Sturm Graz is probably a step up from um, this team currently. I mean, no, maybe not. Maybe not. No, no, it isn't. Um, we now have Oxford United coming up as our next opponent. They are currently in the ninth position. Hopefully, we can pick up a good result. Another victory right here would be massive. I think Antonsen deserves his spot back in the team. McPherson has played enough now. He should be happy once again. 
And uh, with that, we hopefully will be getting ourselves another great result because this team has been able to beat pretty much every team. They have lost 5-0 against Leicester. Oxford, I guess they played against them in the... Um, in the FA Cup or the Carabao Cup, whichever one it is. And Lewis, once again, getting a goal when Cook played down that left-hand side. He didn't get as many goals in simulations. Ferreira steps up and scores again, I'm telling you. He's the biggest talent in world football right now, and he's in our team. Jesus Ferreira. It is 4-1, and Antonsen scores again. Look at that man go, man. He just keeps on scoring. And how old is he again? How old is Ferreira? We can take one more look at it. Ferreira right now is only 20 years old. I'm telling you, this man is going to be something extremely, extremely special. He is up there with one of our uh, most valuable players already, Bennett and Davis up there, of course, because they are so young. But Ferreira with the age of 20, 73 rated Colombian is outstanding. So I was personally looking into the backup players that could potentially join us next season as backups for Jesus Ferreira and Angol and Koji Miyoshi right here is quite an interesting choice if you ask me. This man can play center attacker mid, can play center mid and can play center forward. That is the position that we are personally interested in with him and um, the thing with this guy at the same time is that he has some really really good stats in terms of pace and all that stuff but also the finesse shot. So, Miyoshi, we're going to try and approach and sign you for the next season now, my friend. You're 23 years old, perfect age to join a team that is on its way to become a great, great club. I would say he would be an important first team player. He wants to be a crucial first team player, though. Now, that can turn into a little bit of an issue because we are obviously using Angol. But Angol is kind of stuck at that 65 rating. As much as I love Angol, we have to make the right decisions for the club. That doesn't mean Angol will ever be sold. He will always be a part of the team. He will always be someone that we sub in, uh, at least uh, later on when we get into like the Premier League and stuff. But for now, we're going to be countering a two-year contract for Miyoshi. Miyoshi is happy with that. Release clause, he doesn't want one, which is great. And in terms of his wages, he actually asks for it straight away. I'm going to remove the bonus and I'm going to give him higher wages. How do I edit this thing? There we go. We're going to give him 8.5k. Come on now. Come on now, Miyoshi. Sign for us. Sign for us for the next season, Miyoshi. You could be the next Nakajima. I'm telling you, you could be the next one for us. He wants 9.4k, that's fine with me. He has joined. Miyoshi is joining. Leighton Orient, the O's have picked up yet another great signing on pre-contract. And I'm telling you guys, next season we are ready. We are ready for the championship if we do get in there. If we do get promoted, Tarin, Haraslin and Miyoshi, these players are going to be outstanding for us. Trust me when I say that, especially Miyoshi, I am very, very excited about. He is a five foot six tall player who has a four star weak foot, the finesse shot, incredible pace, high attacking work rate, unbelievable agility. That will remind me a lot of Nakajima from past career modes. With that transfer, I'm really happy with how things are going. We're sadly not on track though. I keep getting messages about the board not being too happy. Board, I'm telling you this, if I don't get transfer offers, I can't sell Davis. Don't be mad at me. We get a loan offer for Davis. That is it, boys. That is the one. That is the one. We will accept it. Cremonese, take him. Take him on loan. And then once the transfer window shuts, we call him back. Yes! Come on, that could be working. Um, so Tiriu, we're going to keep around. He has grown quite a lot, so I'm going to keep him around for now. But man, that could be the saving grace. That is it. Davis, we have wanted to let him go out on loan, but I could not set it over to the, the loan list. So I'm really glad that I'm now seeing him on that loan list and um, people actually going for him. So please tell me it actually goes through. Now three messages coming in. Come on. Come on now. Yes! Davis has been loaned out, boys. Davis has been loaned out. Sweeney, loan deal as well. Accept it. Keep on growing away from the teammate. Widowson, big money move. 
accept it. 150k, big money move. <laughs> we will accept it, boys. We will take all of that into account and move on. That is great, man. The situation with Davis might be resolved, guys. Just to make sure, for one month, I'm not going to recall Davis. Um, we will recall him later on. I just want to see how much it will actually cost me if I do recall him right now. Do I even have that type of money in my team to be able to recall him? That will cost me 19k. Oh, that's perfect. That is perfect. Great stuff. So we will definitely recall Davis. I will make sure that nothing is wrong. I'm going to go for one month without Davis, guys, just so you know. Um, we're going to bring on... Um, who are we bringing on to the bench? Ling right there. And then we're going to move the boys along. And that is how we're going to set up from this point on, guys. We are ready to go. Silva de Moraes alongside Antonzin could be a good partnership. Um, we could be scoring some good goals with these guys, but I'm glad. I'm glad that the situation with Davis might have resolved. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. This has turned out to be an amazing one. And yeah, I wish you guys the best. Have a great day. See you next time. Take care. Peace.